Hi everyone, welcome to Take It and Make It Tuesday, brought to you by the Clearview Library District. Tonight's instructional video is going to teach you how to make a scrap thread catcher, which will come in handy for you avid sewers uh, to keep uh, your thread and other scraps under control as you're working on your latest project. But before we send you to that video, I just want to remind you to stay up to date on all of the latest news and information regarding programs for adults and kids of all ages by going to clearviewlibrary.org. In the coming weeks, you'll want to pay special attention because we'll soon be releasing details about this summer's Summer Adventure Program, which has the theme, Tales and Tales. Well, let's get you to that thread scrap catcher video now. Take it away, Aletha. Hi, everyone. We have a great project this month. If you are an avid sewer, this is going to be very handy. It is called a thread catcher and it folds up very compact and I'll demonstrate it again at the end, but it opens up and you catch your thread tails as you're sewing and then you would get rid of the thread tails, fold it back up and it can go in your sewing box or to a class with you, whatever. So in your kit, each of you should have a large rectangle of fabric a smaller rectangle of fabric, some batting, a piece of flat cardboard with two circles on it, a round cut stiff cardboard circle, and some thread. And this is great for recycling projects. You can use cereal boxes, whatever in the future, if you want to make more. And this is from a Pringles can. So the first step you're going to do is take the large rectangle and in the instructions it says to cut it eight inches by nine and three quarters, but I have already done that for you. So you're all set with that. You will turn it to wrong side up and you will fold down about a quarter of an inch on each of the long sides and press that. So press that down more for a marking for later. Press that down. You're going to set that aside. You will take your cardboard template, cut your circles out. And when you do that, you will then have your two cardboard circles. You will use those to make the rest of the parts. So on your batting, you will put your two cardboard circles trace around. Felt tip works great for this. Trace around those. Cut those out. Now you have your two batting circles. Then you'll take that last rectangle piece of fabric and you're going to again use these as a template. Now if you notice on the batting you can have them close together because you're going to cut out exactly on the line. Whereas the fabric we need to allow at least a quarter, if not a half inch, around each circle. I was a little tight on this side, but your piece should allow you to have plenty of space. This is where you really want to watch it, that you have at least an inch each way, so a full, I mean half inch each way, so a full inch between your circles. You'll cut those out. So when everything is cut out, you have your large rectangle, your two pieces of batting, your cardboard circles, and your fabric circles. One thing I didn't mention, on uh, the fabric, when you are tracing the cardboard, try not to use a permanent marker. I don't know if you can see this, the permanent marker does show through on fabric. So on this one, I used just a regular ink pen or a pencil, and it does not show through. And that's what you want to accomplish. And as I mentioned, you'll leave the perimeter very spacious, and then trim that to a circle. I did leave this one with the dark pen mark so that you can see it easier. So at this point, we have large circle, two fabric circles, two cardboard circles, two batting circles, and our ring. The next step, you will 
take the thread and do a running stitch. So it's a fairly long stitch. It's going to be a gathering stitch. You do that around both fabric circles. When that, and leave a long tail. I tried to use a dark thread here, but you'll leave it. I knotted one end of the thread and I left a long tail on the other end. You will then place your batting circle there in the center and your cardboard circle. And this is why that perimeter fabric is so handy. You'll then draw these up, tie a knot to secure it. You'll do that to both of these. You will then have two circles that look like this. This is the right side and the wrong side. When you um, have this completed, you will then want to put these together and stitch a close stitch all the way around. And this, for some reason, reminds me of cookies. So um, I did two, ver two samples here, but it's stitched together so you have that ready. You'll set that aside, then you'll take your fabric circle and this, again, is the folded side and folded. You're going to turn it over, put right sides together to make a cylinder or a tube. You'll then stitch here about a quarter of an inch down through. At that point, again, your ends are turned under. You will slide your ring over the fabric. Some of you have what I call directional fabric and some do not. Directional, the design goes in a certain direction. So you do not want your um, thread catcher to end up upside down when it's standing up. You want it right side up. So you'll have to pay attention to the direction of the fabric. Those of you that don't have directional fabric, it's the same going either way. You're all set with that. Okay, back to our cylinder. So we slide the ring on, and then we're going to fold this over the ring. It takes a little bit of doing. Try not to crease, bend the ring. So you'll slide that over. Slide that ring in. Keep working at it, trying to get the folded edges, the pressed folded edges to meet at the top. You can put some pins in. You probably have plenty of those around. Put some pins in that, holding it together. Now you'll notice I push the ring down to the bottom in that fold. And you'll also notice that this, in this direction, is upside down. But that's really what you want at this point because eventually that ring will be the top. So if your ring is not upside down at this point, flip your fab fabric through, turn it around, and make sure it is that way. I did a little quick hand stitch around this top edge, holding those two folded creased edges together. And when you finish with that, you will have this. At that point, you also want to secure the ring so it stays down there. I basically took <clears throat> some very small stitches from the front, but on the back they're a little longer. So I took a tiny stitch, Came in the back, moved over maybe a quarter of an inch, come up, tiny stitch. They don't have to be very close. You just want to make sure that ring stays put. Then at this point, the directions may read a little funny on this, but you're going to push this through. It almost makes a cuff with the ring. And this is where it might give you a little problem, but just bear with it. What I found works best for me is I folded this in half 
and then I'm going to do it again the other way so that I have marked this holder into fourths. And you'll do the same thing on one of these. It doesn't matter which is the inside and which is the outside. But what I did is I just kind of eyeballed it and said, okay, that's across from each other. And then this is about halfway and halfway. Now, the fun part begins. Thread your needle and put a knot in the end. And you can hold this as you go around. Now, the fabric part of the tube might be slightly bigger than the circumference of this part. But you will just kind of catch in that extra fabric with... You match up those fourths all the way around. One more here. And when you look at it now, you're probably going to notice again that that tube fabric might be popped out a little bit extra in spots. But you'll take that up as you stitch around. You're going to thread your needle, take in that little bit of gathering as you go around. Once that is finished, you will then turn it so it'll look like this at that point. Then you will turn it right side out and do the same thing around the perimeter here just to kind of finish it up and clean it up a little bit. You'll do quick little hand stitches. So then when you're finished, there is your thread catcher. Mine wants to dip a little on one side. There's your thread catcher. Put in all your thread tails. When you're finished, if you're not right near a trash can, just fold, tuck them down the bottom, twist, and it folds right up and contains your thread tails in there. Then when you get the opportunity, you dump it out. And again, you close it up and it's ready for travel or to keep in your sewing basket. Have fun with this. I'll see you next time.